Hello everybody, I just wanted to have a little continuing from my last uh, uh, video that I did. As you can see, this is the tank that you trade in. The ISTA regulators on there. I have a, a silicone line with a check valve on it. That's so no water will back up into that solenoid and wreck it. I'm still using a bubble counter that's off to the side. This one's an old bubble counter. Bought this in the late 80s, 90s, late 90s. And as you can see, the blue line in there has water in it. And that's what happens. Once the pressure in the CO2 system is, when it turns off, that pressure is released finally. And... Some of the water in the bubble counter may back up into the lines. As you can see in that blue line, there, that's water. And because it's been depressurized. Because of this, that's one reason I don't really like using oils and things like that. Because that oil is now going to get in that line and that can blow into your aquarium. And here's the line that goes to the aquarium, to the CO2 diffuser. And I have another check valve on that. So I use two check valves. And that's the line going into the aquarium into the Fluval CO2 diffuser, which has the ceramic stone in it. And the Fluval CO2 diffusers, they're black, and you can unscrew them. So you can work on the, uh, and clean them on the stones. But... That is the reason I don't use oil in any of my uh, bubble counters. But the sealed diffusers have uh, a separate stone. It's a rubber piece with the ceramic stone in the center. This can be taken apart quite e easily, no problem. The thing of it is, is these can be cleaned and reused over and over again. So you don't have to keep buying new CO2 diffusers all the time. You buy one of these, you buy, I have like two or three of them, and what I do is I pull them apart, I soak the ceramic disc that you see in the center there in uh, vinegar, household vinegar. And the vinegar will break away any calcium builds up that will build up in that ceramic stone and it will work with air stones also. If you have an air stone that's all clogged up, soak it in vinegar. You can soak it in vinegar for a few days to a week or two, however long you want. And all that's going to do is break away calcium and clean out all the cal calcium that's built up in there and break it away. Open up the air stone again. And the next step then I take after that is I take the stone and I empty it you know, empty it and clean it in cold water. Then I will put it in a container and also pour directly bleach, 100% bleach, and let it soak the ceramic stone in bleach. You will find out the bleach will clean the stone. It will turn it white. It will kill any algae that are in there that may be clogging it up. It will definitely clean the whole stone like brand new again. The bleach will. Then after you let it soak, for a few days. Uh, you clean it real good in cold water and put it all back together again and it's reusable. This one, like I said, is four to five years old. So they don't really go bad on you. And I've done this with uh, aquarium stones and my air stones for ponds. I've done the same thing. Clean them in uh, vinegar first and then use bleach to clean off any algae or anything that has grown on them. So this is the bubble counter off the Milwaukee and that is one reason I don't do it. Once the thing has been depressurized, I don't trust it that if you did fill this full of a, a thin oil, that, that oil is not going to go into the lines and then that oil can be blown into your aquarium and uh, because I've seen disasters uh, with ponds and stuff with, with pumps that use oil-filled pumps. And the pumps have leaked oil all over the pond. So I don't trust using oil. I'd rather use water. And the water doesn't evaporate that fast. Maybe every two, three months you may have to fill it up. That's a big deal. 
But with these, they're, they're very easy to fill. Uh, all you have to do is uh, unscrew the top of them to fill up with uh, water again. And you can use a little syringe or something to fill it about halfway to two-thirds way. And see, the top just unscrews real easy. So it's not a big problem. You don't even have to disconnect your airline to it. Just unscrew it, fill it up, and big deal. That That's just me. You can do whatever you want because a lot of people suggest filling them full of oil because of evaporation. But as you can see with that airline, the blue airline had water in it, that's what's going to wind up happening with this oil. It can wind up blowing into your lines and then get into your aquariums. And that's definitely something I don't want. I stay away from. So the ISTA does make a regulator with a bubble counter connected just like this. It's about $104. Or they make one like I've been using for the past five years without a bubble counter connected. I think my next one I'll get a bubble counter that's already pre-connected to the ISTA regulator. But I will buy another ISTA. And like I said before in the last one, and I heard some comments, that I don't really use, I may use these when I first set up the aquarium, trying to get my seal to adjust it. And uh, trying to get these things green, um, no, I, I really don't have very much luck in that, uh, unless you're pumping a lot of CO2 into it for some reason. And it takes hours for these to change. Don't forget, it may take a couple hours for this to change from blue to a lighter blue or, or deeper blue until a green. So that's a lot of time you're waiting to see if it's changed. By that time, you can uh, crash your pH or you can have too much CO2 in the aquarium before you rec uh, realize I'm putting too much CO2 into the aquarium. And in order, like I said in my last video, to prevent that, then you would have to use a pH regulator, which the your regulator on your uh, CO2 tank would be connected to this, and this would turn on and off your CO2 tank. And in other words, you would never shut your, you wouldn't put it on a timer. This would actually control everything for you to make sure you don't overdose your CO2 and regulate your pH. But anyhow, I thought I would show you that, that this is what I use. It's simple, it's easy, it's not a glass one, it doesn't look as nice as a glass one, but I like it where you can put it all the way at the very bottom of the aquarium, and it's inexpensive and cleanable. Until next time, uh, this is Dr. Novak. I hope you enjoyed the video.